my mother. He said to the me a message lady. just now. Say, say bless up to Zairi, the boss lady. Yeah, yeah baby, you didn't tell me you knew her. What is Diamond doing? We went shopping and you made it seem like you didn't care that I was in a relationship and then you hear inviting Zari. First things first, before I say anything on this video, I just have a quick question. For those of you that have actually completed watching season one of Young, Famous and African, how did you do it? How did you protect your sanity whilst watching that series because it's hectic guys it's giving me so much crazy vibes like it's crazy it's hectic i mean i've only watched episode one and two and there's so much judgment flying here and there like jaggers people are being so judgmental of each other i mean and i'm wondering like is any of you perfect though there was annie being very very petty and judgmental on the first meeting with Kanye at Kanye's ball already having an opinion over Kanye's mothering skills to her daughter and also at the same time showing us a vulnerable side as to oh, all the surgeries that her daughter had had and while saying that she's in South Africa the daughter is in nigeria <laughs> guys i don't even understand oh and there was um andele andele too was a bit judgmental I, I i don't know if this guy has his own shady part yet on the series i'm yet to find out but he was also being judgmental and then there was also zari in episode two being judgmental over annie's outfit to diamond's um arabian themed um, is it dinner guys it's hectic the first question is how did you deal how did you just how did you survive watching this series without losing your mind because i feel like i am struggling so hard to get a grip on my sanity these people they're going to drive me crazy hey welcome back to my youtube channel my name is glory elijah this is frankly speaking with glory i am the girl with the tea and the tea of this video of course is my reaction to episode one and two of young famous and african i mean it's so easy for people for humans to pass on judgment very very quickly to form an opinion over people that they know nothing absolutely nothing about i mean take for instance the the, the at the ball at kanye's ball i was kind of i was kind of disappointed with with annie's reaction towards kanye's um should i say disclosure about how she parents her daughter oh yes fine she has her own mansion her daughter lives just next door to her and you know i think annie actually forgot that kanye is living her best life like she's single when i say single like she's not married so she she's not in a marriage relationship with her daughter's father so she has her own private life she lives a very very extravagant luxurious flashy life and she has a boyfriend whom i feel is probably not going to be the first and the last that will come into her life yes that dude might take a walk and kanye might have to have another person she's dating living with her in the same house so she probably does not want her daughter to be a party or be a witness to a you know wild lifestyle that was why she decided to probably respect her 15 year old daughter you know by getting her his space right beside her own house where she can actually be keeping an eye on her daughter but also giving her daughter that liberty and of course yes guys i agree the age is actually too young her daughter is still on that age but she knows her daughter best yes she is the mother of that girl so she knows what is best for her daughter and i'm sure that she did not just abandon her daughter in that apartment alone or by herself even though she admitted to you know them allowing her daughter to experiment and do whatever she wants to do but then i just felt like annie has no freaking idea about this situation and yes i mean anyone who is a parent who is a mother especially to girls would of course react quite naturally and expectedly the way annie and Andile reacted when kanye made that disclosure but then i felt like annie took hers way too far and the fact that those two people even walked out on the table to go and have a separate conversation about it i felt like that was really rude i mean someone invited you for dinner at a ball a public gathering and then because you do not agree with the person's values you decided to walk out on the guest walk out on the person to go and have your own private conversation 
That was so rude. And you know, that really got to Kanye because I think the very next day she went to visit her daughter to have a conversation with the daughter to ask the daughter if she was a bad mom. Am I a bad mother? No. Something. No. Am I a bad mother? No, you're not. It's just that it is kind of different. What, my parenting style? Yes. If you had to guide me in being a normal parent. If you gave birth to somebody, then it's your choice on how to raise that person. I love you so much. Hey guys, to be very frank with you, I kind of felt sorry for her having to go through with that conversation because of course, your daughter will not really tell you that you're a bad mom. Your daughter will give you accolades for, you know, trying your best and doing all you can to make her comfortable. But then, I also loved the fact that she had that conversation with her daughter because through that conversation, I was able to see a very transparent relationship between Kanye and her daughter. Yes, at that point, they were having that relationship. I could see clearly that this was no ordinary bond. This was no ordinary parent-child relationship. It was a parent-child relationship that had blossomed, that had grown, that had evolved into, you know, a bond between a mother and a daughter, between friends. Friends, mother-daughter turned sisters, turned best friends. And guys, from the way they were talking, I am very sure that they they are very very open with each other and i liked it guys i liked it and i liked the fact that the daughter was also very bold enough to tell her certain things you know that she felt she was not doing right at certain times and i also loved kanye's words as well that listen i am being your mother for the first time you are being my daughter for the first time we are in this together we're in this to grow we're in this to lead each other on and help each other and guys what better way what better way to raise a child i mean do you want to be raising your child in care you don't want your child to say anything to you i don't get it but guys i just felt i, I felt comfortable and i felt like kanye was living her truth she is living her truth i had to take a step back as well to examine annie's own situation and guys it was very obvious that it's not like annie is a 100 percent present mother She's a businesswoman, she's an actor, she's into a lot of things, yes. So she's definitely not at home 100% all the time, 24-7. So she has people taking care of her kids at home. When she's at home, she's at home. When she's not at home, she's not at home. I mean, we saw in episode one where she was having um, a, a call, a phone call conversation with her daughter. She also shared about how her daughter has undergone about six surgeries for her legs. She, she shared a lot. She showed us her vulnerable side. But that doesn't make her a saint because Kanye has not really shown in those two episodes her own vulnerable side as well about how or whatever she and her daughter has gone through. And guys, I just honestly, I just felt like that was just some cheap emotional blackmail right there. Because the fact that you are able to show people your vulnerable side, it does not make you better than those people that are not ready to show their own vulnerable part as well and then i also love the fact that in episode two swanky jerry in a very stylish and classy way you know also took out time to reprimand annie for her judgmental attitude towards kenny in a different apartment next door I, regardless Man, I just, it's next I just door feel, okay it's like can you hear your had, next door neighbor i just feel like she had her own situation well, which is because she of her has man yes which is understandable because at the end of the day she can't keep introducing her daughter to different, to different men no, no, and but people that, attach to the kids differently you are a mother that is extremely attached to your daughters i loved the things that he said and even though annie was still very adamant i loved the fact that swanky jerry played the role of a good friend yes took her on a helicopter ride and also used that opportunity to share his own reservations about her attitude towards candy then in that same episode too we saw how diamond was investing so much time and energy and resources even to impress and woo and what i mean nadia nadia nakai and guys i was wondering like this guy haven't you had enough how many baby mamas again i think four and then four kids that he's not even sure of do thinks he actually has six kids. In fact, he's not even sure of the number of kids he has. And now he is busy chasing Nadia Nakai. Nadia Nakai, who is in, in, in a one month old relationship, that one is busy deceiving herself that, oh, she just wants a proper friendship with Diamond because she's looking forward to having a collaboration, a music collaboration with him. And I'm wondering like, girl, 
Jude is already telling you to go and help him to select a car of your choice for him. So he's kind of he's kind of playing the hunter's game, yeah. Oh, girl, you know what's best for me. So go ahead and buy me a car. Do guys actually send women to buy them cars? But Diamond is actually doing it with Nadia, and she's falling for it because she's feeling like hmm, this guy probably values my opinion in things that concerns his life, his welfare. Is luxurious lifestyle for that matter. And then there was also Zari, Zari the boss lady, who is um, Diamond's baby mama of two kids, and he is still obviously madly in love with her. Yes, but he knows that he messed up. Yes, he cheated on her, it went public, got really, really scandalous, especially because the person he cheated on her with was also a celebrity, a public figure. So it's a messy relationship. And even though both of them are trying to be very, very civil in co-parenting, it's very obvious that Diamond still has a lot going on for him with regards to his feelings, his affections for Zari. But Zari is already in another relationship with someone else that she likes. And so, Nadia saw all of this at Diamond's Arabian-themed dinner party that he organized for the set, and she got really uncomfortable. And the way she was reacting at seeing Zari and Diamond's, um, should I say, vibe, you know, their chemistry, she was already feeling insecure. <laughs> and I'm wondering, like, these people, you people just love drama. That was the part when Annie fully, in full force, portrayed her insecurities. Guys, I mean, she did it in episode one when she was um, Googling Two Face to know what's up with him, what's the latest gist about Two Face. And I was wondering, like, why would you be Googling your own husband? Of course, I understand, so uh, let's not even go into that just yet. But then, still at Diamond's dinner party, yeah? Um, when Two Face had called, and the excitement though, guys, she was so excited, like she, she literally was jumping to give the phone to Diamond to talk to Two Face, and then um, Two Face was like, oh, Zari is there. You, Two Face literally wanted to talk to just Zari, and I'm yet to find out what is going on between Two Face and Zari, but. Zari spoke and Annie started being skeptical. I started asking questions like, oh, how did you know my husband? How did you? Guys, I just felt like that was a lot. I'm like, Annie, at least wait, wait. Later, you ask Two-Face how he got to know Zari. Why are you asking Zari? Oh my God. You know what, guys? I have a truckload of questions. Now, I really need to go and watch episode three. Maybe after watching episode three, I'm gonna get answers to these questions. For now, ha, my, my emotions are still on the rocks, okay? So let me just leave this one for all of you to let me know your thoughts about the things that I have mentioned, the things you also observed, your first reaction to episode one and two in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Have an amazing day. Bye.